How's it? Indian Cowboy Doc Sports Doc Connect on Tuesday, August the 20th, as we get this video to you. Have your free pick winner in just a second here. And uh, hopefully we'll get you a nice free pick winner today. I think we were on a 6-1 and one free pick run. We missed our uh, selection yesterday. But uh, we're back to doing videos. I'm back uh, back here on, in stateside after traveling abroad for about a month. Uh, so back here. Uh, we are also going to have a live show uh, today as well. Uh, so looking forward to that. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this video and then do the live show and uh, take care of that. But um, but yeah. Hello, I'm Indian Cowboy. This is Doc Sports. Indian Cowboy's been around for uh, 19 years and Doc Sports 53 years. I have a doctor and a master's in biostatistics. That's how these algorithms work. Welcome to my free daily podcast. Our best selections over at DocSports.com under Rune Shiva and, uh, or Indian Cowboy. The next best selections are free picks and leans, which is the daily video that you're watching right now. Uh, we are back to doing YouTube premium videos. Uh, I'm going to try to do one every single day. It's a live show. Uh, normally, we try to give it to you at 10 Eastern uh, at night, and um, but the, today's live show is probably going to come at you at 2 Eastern this afternoon. It's a recorded podcast. Uh, you get about 30 live shows, hopefully, uh, 300 games. That's our goal, $20 a month. It's a recorded podcast. You can re-listen to it anytime, and you get a written summary at the end as well sent out to you. The link to YouTube Premium is in the comment section as well as a link, link to how to get to free $60 with the premium selections. If you want more content, be sure to check my Twitter. It has our latest updates, our hot takes on sports, popular consensus reports, and our latest videos are posted there. So what do I need to tell you? We had a nice seven-unit winner in baseball yesterday on the Mets, winning 4-3 uh, to three against uh, the Orioles. Um, we have a seven-unit WNBA selection today at 7 o'clock today. We've won back-to-back -back winners in the WNBA. As it relates to baseball, we've won back-to-back -back winners. We gave you the, the Mariners over the Pirates recently, I believe, on Sunday. We gave you the seven-unit winner in baseball as well yesterday on the Mets. So back-to-back -back winners in baseball, back-to-back -back winners in the WNBA, all good stuff. And WNBA is on a plus 4,300 run as well. And hopefully we'll get you some good content today. Football has been a slow start, but we will pick it up. We will. I think we're going to have five selections on Thursday. And we'll talk more about football tonight on the live show as well. I think the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to start with the live show first. And uh, that's kind of our first. That's the whole concept of it. Do our live show first. That's the research that gets us going uh, for the next day's action. All right. And uh, you get the first look on the next day's action. All right. Let's get your free play winner today. And I like the over between Los Angeles and Connecticut in the WNBA. Uh, you can find the over at around five, 158 right now. The last time these two teams met, the game went under. But LA lost 71 to 87 last time. Uh, they are 6-21. and 21. Connecticut won 79-70 to 70 in their last game. So I like the fact that L.A. only scored 71 points in their last time. I like the fact that Connecticut is 19-7. and seven. L.A. has lost four in a row coming in. Both these teams are off of losses. The last time they met, the game went under 153, obviously. But I think this one goes over the 158. L.A. will get up for this game. They don't have anything else to look forward to. So why not get up to play Connecticut, who has a fantastic fan base, and the crowd will be rocking. And um, Connecticut doesn't lose back-to-back -back games very often. And the fact they lost Atlanta and only put up 70 points against Atlanta has to infuriate this team because they lost as a favorite on the road to Atlanta and only put up 70 points. So the over does make sense here, the over 158. Seattle and Washington in the WNBA, I like the over there as well. Seattle's lost back-to-back -back games coming in, um, you know, by 21 to Atlanta, 17 to Indiana on the road. This team hasn't lost three in a row all year, mind you, but only a minus six and a half point favorite at Washington is a bit surprising. Seattle beat them 101 to 69 last time, which could be the reason why. Seattle's calling card is their defense, of course, so they could show up on defense um, after a loss, but at the, same at the same time, Washington could avoid giving up 100 points to Seattle like they did last time. So I get why you might think it might go under Seattle off of a loss, and that two back to back losses, and yet they're only six and a half point favorites on the road. They haven't lost three in a row all year. However, Washington lost its team 101 to 69 last time, and they don't want to give 101 points. So I get both of that. Having said that, uh, keep in mind, I think what supersedes all of this is the fact that Washington lost 101 to 69 last time, and they will be an active dog. And Seattle only put up 75 points in their last game, which is one of the lowest uh, amount, too. So for those reasons uh, of all seasons, so for those reasons, I like the over between Seattle and Washington. As far as Baltimore, and the Mets are concerned. I like the Mets there. Baltimore lost three to four. Do they lose again or do they bounce back? Baltimore is still 20 games above 500. The Mets lost Baltimore four to three last game. They won three or four. Kremer and Quintana here. Kremer 4.480 ERA. Kremer six innings, five hits, one run against Washington. The question is, can Kremer put together back-to-back -to -back quality starts? Quintana here, 4.26 ERA, comes off of four innings, seven hits, and four runs start against Oakland. Six innings, four hits, and five runs start against Seattle. So back-to-back -back sketchy starts for him. It's a pitcher who did go six innings, five hits, and one run against Minnesota. It's not like the Orioles can't lose back-to-back -back games. 
Um, he was dominant. Remember, Quintana's the same pitcher that was dominant against Washington. He went seven innings, one hits, and no runs against Washington. And then immediately in his next start against Washington, he went seven innings, four hits, and no runs. So the Mets, to me, make sense here, even though the Orioles come off a loss. Finally, Cleveland and the Yankees. I like the under there. Cleveland lost three in a row coming in. They had won five in a row prior to that. Tough series against Milwaukee, honestly. The Yankees have also lost back-to-back games coming in, so that's tough. Boyd and Gill here. The Boyd has a 1.69 ERA. Boyd, five innings, three hits, and one run against the Cubs. It was a win. Six strikeouts in his last game. Gill with a 3.25 ERA. Four innings, seven hits, and four runs against the White Sox. But he went five innings, two hits, no runs against the Angels. Gill, five innings, five hits, three runs against the Phillies. Five innings, four hits, one run against the Mets. Gill losing to the White Sox is a big loss. Both these teams need to bounce back. Gill is on the biggest bounce back as well. But Cleveland got swept last game. Uh, 50% is on the under. But I do think this game goes under the posted total between Cleveland and the Yankees. That is what I have for you guys. Hope you guys are doing well. Please take a moment and uh, please take a moment and like and subscribe. And I'll see you back here tomorrow. Seven unit WBA today at seven o'clock. I'll see you back tomorrow. Take your Indian cab, working hard for you every single day.